So welcome everyone to um, Satsang with Kate. So this is um, week three of the uh, theme called healing. So in a, in a way, it's funny because how could we give like a week three calling it healing when everything we do, we're healing our mind. So it's sort of like, it, it's funny when you try to even say we're in week three of a set saying about healing, it's always healing. So, so we start to see that uh, sometimes we're in a paradoxical thing, but, you know, we're just using particular terms and themes and it's all leading us to a healed mind. So I'm going to start off this morning or this evening, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> Actually, it's afternoon here because we start this group at day. So I'll start off this afternoon. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what, what time it is because in truth we're in the eternal now if we didn't know what time it was and we weren't interested in looking at the sun or looking at a clock we would just know that it's always now that's what, it's just well, there's some something that's now isn't it and without thinking about the past or yesterday or what we did even one minute ago we're always in the we're always in the present it's impossible to be out of the present moment you can't be because your mind's always in the present it can be thinking about the past but you're thinking about the past in the present you're always in the present so you don't have to try to get into the present because you can't be out of it so that's something that you can <laughs> ponder on <laughs> so this is a a little poem from Helen's book, The Gifts of God, her poem book. It's called The Last Judgment. Peace be to you. There is no instant when you stand alone, no time when God will fail to take your hand, no moment when his love does not surround you, comfort you in care along with you, for every wish you have, each little joy or stab of pain, at one with you forever, he remains your one relationship, your only friend. You are the Holy Son of God himself. Peace be to you, for what is his is yours. The just lovely little sort of reminders, little summaries of the course. So I'm just going to just do something here, just mute on arrival, just because it just helps with the, um, for our minds to settle. But peace of mind doesn't have to have silence in the outside, what we call outside, we take the silence with us. So today's, um, first of all, welcome to everyone that's just joined in the last few minutes. So today's that thing, we're going to um, continue the theme of healing we've got. Um, it's funny because I was given this uh, particular meditation out of the course and I kept saying, um, you know, is there any text? Is there anything for me to read out before the meditation? And just nothing was coming in. And it was kept coming in, showing me how in the last couple of weeks we've done the meditation where we've focused on particular um people in the group for healing and that was very strong in my mind that that is to continue in the group and be the focus of the group for a period of time 
So we can start to see that the last two weeks when we've done the really deep meditations. Now, generally, I include a lot of, you know, different meditations each week. Um, so there's going to be, um, there's going to be some sort of, we're going to do sort of three different things today. The first thing is um, just a, just a, a um, a way to help you get into the decision maker. Then we're going to do a meditation based on um, a particular thing that Jesus has in the course. So I'm going to read it out. It's, he gives instructions. So I'm just going to read it out. We'll just do it. And then the third part will be where we, I've got a couple of paragraphs from a section of the course where once again, we'll ask anyone to put their hand up at the end of the group that would like the group to focus on them for three minutes and see, hold them in our minds as the perfect Holy Christ, the innocent Son of God. So what happens is when we do this final part, we um, we're, we're actually cleansing our own mind. And the person that we're all focusing on is um, possibly going past some resistance to the receiving of love, but it's all happening in their mind. So one of the things that we have to sort of get to sort of an understanding or is that everything's happening in our mind. Nobody actually heals us. It's our mind that is healed by the ideas that are presented through the course and through our willingness to see something different, to open up. Now, Sometimes people think that somebody's done something for them. But what happens is like Jesus and the Holy Spirit are like symbols and keys. They're like keys that open a door in our mind. So we can, as teachers of God, which is what we become when we do this inner work um, with our mind, we now become that that Jesus was. So he wants us to be the Christ mind in the world as well. When I say in the world, it's that it's like everything I say you could argue with because you could use these levels and say there is no world, there's no one to heal, there's no, nothing to do, right? So just understand that um that's why if, in my journey I never got into groups that really discussed or debated the course because literally you could argue and discuss and debate on levels right and so where we are seemingly in a world with fear and believing we're a body all the way up the ladder you can argue from different aspects on the ladder with anybody else. So it's not worth it. Just let that go. If you can feel into where someone's speaking from, you can feel into something that might be right for them. So anything that, a, a, I mean, a, the teaching really is, that you're not a body, there is no world, nothing has happened, nothing has ever happened. There's just nothing except God and this infinite divine love. And we are that. So we're not a blob and we're not a void and we're not a nothingness. We are this infinite love. And when we get that experience in this, hopefully this lifetime, um, everything is known then it's like knowledge so prior to knowing we 
come to these teachings and we try to figure it out we try to use sort of our mind that's separated and split off to try to figure out what oneness feels like but at the end when we go into that experience of oneness everything's answered in that moment so when you're not in that experience you're in the practice of forgiveness that's our only purpose here this these lifetimes that you know we're coming back and living these lifetimes in the ego mind and we're watching this projection so the it's as if um what we're seeing where our mind is at it's like a step back from where we think we are we think that we're somehow in here somewhere located in this maybe in the in the brain you know in this body so we think we're something that sits behind the eyes or in the ears so we we've sort of got this idea that we're located in a body that this what's speaking is is in a body because there's movement but where we really are is like if you can imagine i think the best analogy is if you imagine picking up some virtual reality goggles and you put them on and you start to see yourself as an avatar and you're sitting there not moving any hands and the avatar is moving hands and somehow there's a transference that you're that avatar out in a virtual reality world but you're the one what you're doing is that's why you're viewing mentally what has gone by because the whole virtual reality game is over and you're aware now this mind that's viewing something that's been and done but seems to be happening and playing out with time and space and bodies and and that's and that's where we're stuck so we're sort of stuck in this mind that's um just sees that and feels that it's in the body and what we're trying to do is we're trying to step away back from the mind that just feels itself to be in a body and reacting to everything and giving a meaning to everything so um i'm going to read these two paragraphs out it's um it's in the clarification of terms it's about the holy spirit and then i'm just going to go through a little bit of an exercise just if you can um, it might help for, help but just to know that anything that i present take it lightly if it doesn't work for you or you don't get an experience nothing has gone wrong because just the idea has been presented to you it just unlocks something a little bit then usually as we listen to these teachings it's like a very very gentle unlocking or letting light in so don't beat yourself up or have an expectation about having any experience it's very nice that people have written about their experiences but we're all going to get that we're all going to get it in our own way in our own time and it's already happened but we have to go through it to see that it's already happened and you will you'll see you'll be able to view that everything you think happened to you never happened you'll get into a mind that is not part of a linear and space mind like the ego mind you're going to go back to a mind that is not anything to do with this egoic mind but it takes dedication and willingness and a lot of letting go of judgment of how you go right so if so what i usually do when i go used to go into these meditations or listen to someone and try to do what they would say i just sort of said look holy spirit you be in charge um if i'm you know whatever experience i'm meant to have let me know bring it in so we obviously put the inner therapist in charge so this is just sort of a, a throwing out some seeds 
someone might peck at it, eat it, some might look at it, just push it away and say, no, I'm going to eat some seeds later on. There's just no big deal because the, the truth is that you can't do anything wrong on your journey home because you never left that home. You feel like you've left. But literally there's nothing you can do to muck it up. So that's sort of like there, nothing is ever going wrong. If, you go, if you're in judgment or you're in fear, you're just in a state that could never be, although it feels like you're in it. And God, God's love is always shining on you and your holy self has never stopped being its holy self for one second. All we are is unaware of our true holy self and our Father, of that infinite love that light and love and laughter and just that purity of that love. All we've done is just uh, lost awareness of it, but it's still there and that's it. It's literally like we're in a dark room and all we have to do is turn the light on. And we're, you know, what is darkness? The absence of light. So when you're in fear, you're just, you're just forgetting who you are. And all you need to do is remember. But that sounds like so simple when I say it, right? But it's not simple, right? Because I struggled for years to remember who I was. So I know what it's like. So we use these lifetimes and we just really, the best thing you can do is be so kind and gentle to yourself as you uh, go through this particular lifetime. And look, we might have to come back for more lifetimes. But at least we know now um, what these lifetimes are for. And so we can say, hey, isn't that great? I can, I can give up trying to seek outside myself and I can start to come within. So I've talked a lot about Jesus in my previous recordings. And I thought I'd talk about the Holy Spirit. I used both symbols on my journey. Um, Jesus seemed to be the really beautiful love that healed me, healed my mind of the belief in sin and unworthiness and sort of stain, a stain of, you know, these ideas that we've, we're guilty and bad. And the Holy Spirit, for me, was the wisdom. So those two things have sort of joined together now. They're not sort of looked at at Holy Spirit or Jesus. They're just sort of merged into this, um, into these, just like a, an, a love and a wisdom beyond anything that's in my mind um, and speaking to me and, and it's my voice, so it's like a one voice, you could say. <laughs> it's so hard to use words to describe these things, isn't it? So I'm going to start from paragraph three. The Holy Spirit is described as the remaining communication link between God and his separated sons. In order to fulfill this special function, the Holy Spirit has assumed a dual function. He knows because he is part of God and he perceives because he was sent to save humanity. He is the great correction principle, the bringer of true perception, the inherent power of the vision of Christ. He is the light in which the forgiven world is perceived, in which the face of Christ alone is seen. He never forgets the creator or his creation. He never forgets the son of God. He never forgets you. And he brings the love of your father to you in an eternal shining that will never be obliterated because God has put it there. The Holy Spirit abides in the part of your mind that is part of the Christ mind 
he represents yourself, capital S self, and your creator who are one. He speaks for God and also for you, being joined with both. And therefore, it is he who proves them one. He seems to be a voice, for in that form, he speaks God's word to you. He seems to be a guide through a far country, for you need that form of help. He seems to be whatever meets the needs you think you have. But he is not deceived when you perceive yourself entrapped in needs you do not have. It is from these he would deliver you. It is from these that he would make you safe. So, so it's really good to understand that the Holy Spirit is in, is in our mind. Our body is in our mind. The world is in our mind. Everything is in our mind. Nothing is outside our mind. So just for a short period of time, I'm just going to go through some um, inquiry or some things I'm going to ask you to do just to these sort of things helped me to get into the decision maker mind the observer or the witness so if you'd like to just close your eyes for a few minutes and just I'll give you a couple of minutes now before I ask the first question just to settle down just quieten your mind, use whatever practice you use, or you might just want to sit and sink below the thoughts. Okay, so just try to locate your mind. There's no right or wrong way to do this, by the way. It's just a like an inquiry. So withdraw in, go right in. Now, I want you to try to find the next thought that's going to come into your mind. Just wait and look. Just wait for a thought. I want you to see if you can see the thought. Now, whatever thought that was, if you were, if you had a thought and you were able to see it. If you 
were able to see that thought. You're not the thought. Where you're looking at the thought from is the decision maker, is the witnesser, the observer. Now, once again, try to see the next thought that comes into your mind. Just wait in silence and wait for it to arrive. Now, one thing you can prove is that if they were your thoughts, if that thought that arrived was your thought, you would have known what it was before it arrived. You couldn't know because you were waiting for it. You were sitting quietly, looking, waiting for the thought. So you, this little exercise proves that you are not the maker of thoughts, because if you were, you would know what it would be, but you were waiting for it. In that moment, when you sat in that quietness, waiting for it, you can't know what it is. So this little exercise proves that they're not your thoughts. They're thoughts that are fed to you from a thought system. It's a system of thoughts that is feeding into your mind. And all those thoughts refer to you as a body, as a person in a world. Now you may have had a thought, you know, I need to, I need to remember to buy such and such at the shops, or I need to remember something or after the group or or you might have had a thought about the meditation later on. Should I put my hand up? But you still can't know that thought when you're sitting watching the thoughts. Jesus says for us to look at our thoughts as a procession going through our mind. So the thought arises and leaves. And then we come back into the decision maker, the observer of the thought. Now meditation in the traditional sense is where you focus on your breath and you notice when you've attached to a thought and then you gently bring your mind back to your breath. That's the meditation I learned that we call, you know, we assume or we sort of call it Buddhist med meditation, breath meditation. So there's various meditations you can use. But one thing in that type of meditation is that you're noticing when you've attached to a thought, you've been drawn away from it and then you bring your focus back to your breath. So with our forgiveness practice, what we're trying to do all day, every day, is notice when we've attached to that thought, just like in meditation. 
but we don't bring our mind back to our breath. We bring that thought to the Holy Spirit. And we have it replaced with another tr a true thought, something that corrects it, gives us. So our Course in Miracles journey is about correcting our perception, correcting our thoughts. So when, if you've ever, I'm assuming everyone's had the Holy Spirit correct their perception. And one thing that I noticed on my journey was when I sat quietly and offered up the fear thoughts or the egoic thoughts, the guilt thoughts, the unworthy thoughts or the judgment thoughts of someone else, all the rubbish like, you know, he's just sitting in a big rubbish dump in your mind. But one thing I noticed as I started to go within and look at my mind is that you can really only have one thought at a time. So when you're in the ego thoughts, if you offer them up as the decision maker, so if you can let a thought go, you're not the thought. If you can say, Holy Spirit, I give you this thought, you can't be the thought. You're the one letting it go to the Holy Spirit. And then when you then feel um, a little bit peaceful after you've done that and you say, Holy Spirit, bring me the correction, which is all we're asked to do is be willing to have they corrected you can start to see that you're sitting there with a sort of a quiet mind waiting for the correction and then at some stage a correction comes in something comes into your mind to help you and that is the Holy Spirit. It might just be a rem remembrance of the daily lesson. It might be a remembrance to apply the daily lesson to the upset. That is the Holy Spirit because the ego would never tell you. The ego thoughts are based on separation. So any thoughts that say apply the daily lesson or remember what Kate said or re remember what David Hofmaster said here any or any other teacher you follow or anything from the course or you know anything that comes in that helps you is the Holy Spirit we do not have our own thought system we don't have, I don't have Kate's thoughts. There's no such thing as Kate's private thoughts. We only have a choice between thoughts that come in, that tell us we're unworthy, that tell us we're guilty, that tell us we're separated, that judge others, now, that's doing this little exercise where you look and what is my next thought going to be means that they're not your thoughts. You're the one witnessing them. But the ego, what happens is when um, we're caught up in the ego, we're not in the decision maker, we're not in the observer. So as you go and you keep doing more and more forgiveness and more introspection and watching your mind, you start to move more and more into that place where you're watching the thoughts and you can see a thought appearing and you just say, no, thanks, and let it go. And that's what we call sort of like quick forgiveness and instant forgiveness. 
if you get caught up in the story that the ego brings, it brings one thought. And then if you attach to it and show interest in it and join it and say, yes, yeah, I am bad. Yeah, I really mucked up there or I shouldn't have done this and I shouldn't have done that. You're in the thoughts again. They've come in, they've overwhelmed you. And that's when you generally have to do what I call medium forgiveness or long forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it could be just sitting down and just saying what meaning have I given this and let it go so you can watch the meaning the ego thoughts have given something and let it go and other times you need to there's going to be like a lot of sort of forgiveness to do long forgiveness which is where it might take a few hours to unwind you from it. And it doesn't matter what it is, it, as long as you do it. So you're willing to dig away at it until it's released and gone. So as I've said many times before, forgiveness is any time you're using some like repeating something from a course, thinking about the love of God, feeling into it, whatever you're doing that isn't based, any thoughts based on fear and guilt and judgment, you're in the Holy Spirit. So our brothers can speak from the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit can appear in your mind. Uh, you know, through your thoughts, through something that remind us that is something helpful. And this is how we validate um, that we're not um, the thoughts in our mind. Because we start to see that when we get um, something that's like an inspired idea or something from the Holy Spirit, we didn't come up with it. So in truth, who we are is that decision maker waiting and choosing. So it's like the chooser or the observer where um, we're choosing um, which one, which, so when you do rules for decision, Jesus says it actually gets you into like a Holy Spirit activation. There's something in that rules for decision that pushes your mind into the Holy Spirit and it sort of gives you protection against the ego. So, um, I was just looking at the little comments, so that's nice to wake me up here. But I want you to focus on this um, inner, this inner decision maker. So this little thing that I've given you, I mean, it's so simple, isn't it? Just to look at your next thought and also just say to yourself, I'm going to find my mind. I'm going to look within and look for my mind. And really the answer is you can't find it, right? Because the mind is not located in your head. It's, it's vast. So the, so the answer to that is something that helps you release any idea that it's in your head. It's not in your brain. Right, there's these some, you know, people talk about the brain and the mind. It's not. The, the, the little bit of grey matter that's found in your head doesn't think. It doesn't have thoughts. We have to get past this idea that the brain is thinking. The brain doesn't think. Okay. The mind is not something that you can locate. But you, can, but you can be aware of thoughts in the mind. 
So when we do these meditations, when we're blessing someone and washing their feet, we're doing that to someone in our mind. So when we look at somebody that we think is outside of us, we're looking at an image that we think is outside, but it's in our mind and it's just an image on a, like on a screen in our mind. And then everything we think about that image is in our mind because you can start to look and you can start to see that anything I see or think about is any time I'm upset, it's coming from my thoughts and my beliefs and the meaning I've put on it. And it's not I've put a meaning on it. The thoughts that come into my mind tell me the meaning. So it's like a step back. Jesus, first of all, starts off with that you have given everything all the meaning it has and you can do some really practical applications of that your whole day you can pick up everything and say what meaning did it do I give this why do I like it why do I not like it what do I think about it can I think of somebody else that has another meaning on this therefore it doesn't actually mean the thing that I think it means I've given it a meaning but not me, because there is no Kate. There's no Kate's thoughts. So the thoughts that I'm entertaining are saying this has a meaning. So that, that when we step back, we don't use the I statements. I have given it. We start to step back and say, my thoughts have given this a meaning. And I'm believing those thoughts so it starts to so if you can look at the thought <clears throat> you can start to notice that the observer <clears throat> the decision maker or the observer that looks at the thought say the thought says um you know this iphone is fantastic. <laughs> so say the thought says, I love iPhones. I don't like um, Google phones or whatever. It gives a meaning to it. So the thought is not your thought. Now, having said that, there it's oh. I just want to be really clear about this as well, that the Holy Spirit will use everything the ego made in the dream, in the dream world, to help you in your purpose to help others. So that's why he says you don't know what the phone is for. You, so it's, it's for the Holy Spirit to use now. He's now in charge. So the Holy Spirit brings in thoughts of, oh, message someone or call this person and check in that they're okay or send them a message about something. So this thing is now got the Holy Spirit's purpose. But it's nothing of itself. It, it, in, it's a dream phone in a dream world but where he's giving it a purpose now in the dream to help wake up from the dream. So let's just get back to the decision maker because that's what I really wanted to focus on today. So when we go past, you'll probably find a lot of the lessons in the course, they talk about dropping below the thoughts. 
So that's just really dropping below all the ego thoughts. So it's letting them go and dropping below. And then he talks about reaching God. So the it's another way to say if we can drop below the thoughts, we are not the thoughts. He's asking us to drop below them. So even so, all these little things are pointing to us that we can do that. We are, when he says the power of decision is your own, this is the power for us to choose. And as we start noticing the ego thoughts and not attaching to them as my thoughts, they're going to be very convincing because they talk about you as if they know you, but it's but they're not about us. They're about us as a body, as a separate person, and they're judging us and judging others. So the thought system of the ego, way I look at it, is like a, a balloon, a bubble, and all the thoughts are contained in that balloon. And then the thoughts leak out the hole at the end. You know, when you hold the balloon really tight so only a little bit of air comes out and it's interesting that it sort of sounds like a fart but that's really what the ego is like right it's sort of you know it's just noisy and meaningless right but we attach to those thoughts and Jesus says we're attracted to them we want to feel guilty with you know because we've got this guilt this unconscious guilt in our mind So that's, that's just a little bit about feeling into the decision maker, little ways that you can do that and you can keep doing that if you like here and there. And that proves, that proves that his little uh, exercises prove that you're not the thoughts. It's good, isn't it, to see that and to feel what is the mind and to feel that the mind can't be located. So it's not in here. Where is it? it where is our mind? So it's interesting. And the, so we have to get used to having all these abstractions, right, because the Holy Spirit part of our mind is abstract. Okay, so that's the end of sort of looking and getting an experience of being in the decision maker. And the power of decision is my own. So I've proved to myself that they're not my thoughts because if they were, I wouldn't be sitting there waiting for a thought, not knowing. So I've already proved to myself that if I can't know my next thought, it can't be my thought. It can't be my thought. Or I'd know it. I'd know what my thought was going to be. <laughs> so now we're going to move over to a meditation. Now this beautiful meditation brings in the song of prayer the beautiful song of God and the beautiful light that God is. So once again, these are abstract ideas. And moving away from the ego thoughts, coming into that place, that, that decision maker, that observer, that part of our mind, that we're just remaining in peace. We're now going to let the Holy Spirit, all these thoughts, these, these ideas of Jesus, that Jesus has brought in are all true thoughts that help us, um, help us move and experience our true self. 
this part of this other mind that is waiting for us and is there once we let go of the ego thoughts and we're not interested in paying attention to them and listening to them and going into story and repeating the story to everyone and the past you know the ego is just the big past with the story of the body and its unfair treatment when we're starting to move into the observer we're starting to move into this holiness now later when we do the um, Christ blessing meditation one thing that the course is bringing us to have an experience of is we're letting go of personal love we're letting go of this idea now you might love your children your family your parents but that personal love has to go it's going to re be replaced with divine love now the love that you feel for your aunt for your maybe your pets or your children or somebody that you feel this really strong love that's going to be very close to divine love so we are going to have that love to everyone because divine love doesn't change it loves everything and everyone it seems the same holiness not as bodies but there's a holiness to it so we're trying to come to a different perception or a different experience about love we're going to let go of personal love and we're going to what i felt for me was i could really feel this strong love to my children and I was guided to have that same love for everyone. So this is the way we move into this divine love. But even when we love our children, we still have conditions. But there is moments when we maybe love our animals or our children or something or someone without any conditions. So we do have moments of divine love. And so we got to raise that in our awareness to extend to everyone equally. So if you'd like to just sit quietly, close your eyes, we're going to do a meditation now. So this is the second thing we're doing today. And then after we've done this, we'll do the uh, Christ blessing to the group members. Now this is taken from, I've got the Circle of Atonement edition here, chapter 21, section one, The Forgotten Song. And this is uh, paragraph eight. Now think of these words as Jesus's words. He's really instructing us. So let's really feel into this. Yes, I'm going to do this. Even if I feel some resistance or I feel have a thought or a thought comes into my mind, I can't do it. It's too abstract. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Let that thought go and just keep trying to do it. It's the practicing of it that will bring something listen and try to think if you remember what we will speak of now listen perhaps you catch a hint of an ancient state not quite forgotten dim perhaps and yet not altogether unfamiliar. Like a song whose name is long forgotten and the circumstances in which you heard it completely unremembered. Not the whole song has stayed with you, but just a little wisp of melody attached not to a person or a place or anything in particular. But you remember, 
from just this little part. How lovely was the song. How wonderful the setting where you heard it and how you loved those who were there and listened with you. The notes are nothing, yet you have kept them with you, not for themselves, but as a soft reminder of what would make you weep if you remember how dear it was to you. You could remember, yet you are afraid, believing you would lose the world you learned since then. And yet you know that nothing in the world you learned is half so dear as this. Listen and see if you remember an ancient song you knew so long ago and held more dear than any melody you taught yourself to cherish since. Beyond the body, beyond the sun and stars, past everything you see and yet somehow familiar is an arc of golden light that stretches as you look into a great and shining circle. And all the circle fills with light before your eyes. The edges of the circle disappear and what is in it no longer is contained at all. The light expands and covers everything, extending to infinity, forever shining and with no break or limit anywhere. Within it is everything is joined in perfect continuity. Nor is it possible to imagine that anything could be outside, for there is nowhere that this light is not. This is the vision of the Son of God whom you know well. Here is the sight of him who knows his father. Here is the memory of what you are. A part of this, with all of it within you and joined to all of it as surely as all is joined to you. Accept the vision that can show you this and not the body. You know the ancient song and know it well. Nothing will ever be as dear to you as in this ancient hymn of love. The son of God sings to his father still. And now the blind can see, for the same song they sing in honour of their creator gives praise to them as well. The blindness that they made will not withstand the memory of this song. And they will look upon the vision of the Son of God, remembering who he is they sing of. What is a miracle but this remembering? And who is there in whom this memory lies not? 
the light in one awakens it in all. And when you see it in each other, you are remembering for everyone. I'm just going to give you five minutes just to let that those words come into your mind let the holy spirit take them and show you something just surrender say you show me
Now, if you just want to bring your attention back to the group, but just try to remain, you know, bring some of that with you when you're listening to my voice. We're going to go straight into the last meditation because we want to bring that experience. We're going to use that experience that you that we've just tried to do. We're going to bring that into the next meditation, but give it a little bit of a purpose, okay? So um, anyone that feels they would like the group to focus on their holiness, if you'd like to put your hand up, the mechanical hand. Um, you put your, um, I think, kind of leg, and it's down in reactions <clears throat> at the bottom of the screen. That's it. We're going to do a group one at the end, so everyone will be included. Okay. So there's six. Terrific. Now these are the instructions. <clears throat> and I'll sort of so I'm just reading here from chapter 22, um, section four, seeing past the form of error. And I'm just going to read two paragraphs. So just listen, and it's funny because it sounds like these words sounds like they were coming after that meditation, right? Beyond the bodies that you interposed between you and shining in the golden light that reaches it from the bright endless circle that extends forever is your holy relationship. Beloved of God and holy as himself, how still it rests in time and yet beyond, immortal yet on earth. How great the power that lies in it Time waits upon its will, and earth will be as it would have it be. Here is no separate will, nor the desire that anything be separate. Its will has no exceptions, and what it wills is true. Every illusion brought to its forgiveness is gently overlooked and disappears. For at its centre, Christ has been reborn to light his home with vision that overlooks the world. Would you not have this holy home be yours as well? No misery is here, but only joy. All you need do is dwell in quiet here with Christ, is share his vision. Quickly and gladly is his vision given to anyone who is but willing to see his brother sinless. And no one can remain beyond this willingness if you would be released entirely from all effects of sin. Would you have partial forgiveness for yourself? Can you reach heaven while a single sin still tempts you to remain in misery? 
Heaven is the home of perfect purity and God created it for you. Look at your holy brother, sinless as yourself, and let him lead you there. So as we focus on the sinlessness of our brother, he will lead us, this sinlessness will lead us to the awareness of heaven. We cannot enter heaven with while we believe in any sin at all either in ourselves or in a brother. So we wash away the idea and belief in sin through doing these exercises. So my instructions for this today is we're going to be focusing on each person. But if you feel that there is someone in your mind that you, it really feels like, so the Holy Spirit's in charge of this, right? I'm giving instructions, but you let him take what I'm saying and use it for you. If you feel there's this one character that you feel I cannot forgive, that I believe in his or her sinful nature, or even my own sinful nature, I'm going to, I want the peace of God. I want to have heaven and therefore I forgive and release him from my judgment, my thoughts of judgment. So this is the way the Holy Spirit mind washes out the ego because remember the ego is the belief in sin. So you don't have to do years and years of letting go of, of thoughts of sin. This is like a really direct route to your experience of your Christ self. By just doing these exercises of focusing on the holiness of your brother, his purity, his sinlessness, his gorgeousness, the loveliness of him how Jesus looks at us, how God created us, how God looks at us, how the Holy Spirit looks at us. These are all ways we're moving into that mind and we're practicing and activating it through these activating meditations. So let the Holy Spirit be in charge, but I would like you to, you can do one one of the following that might help you. You could use the light, the circle of light, and feel yourself merged. Say we're going to start with Barbara. You could feel Barbara and yourself and everyone merge in the light. Or you can use the song. You can feel Barbara and yourself joining in the song to God and God singing back to you. Or you can just imagine yourself sitting with Barbara, hugging her, holding her, telling her how similar she is, how beautiful, how holy she is. Or you could wash Barbara's feet. Or you could, while you're washing it, you could say, Barbara, I see the beauty in you. I see the gorgeousness of you. I see your purity, sinless self. So there's some ideas for you. Feel into which one. And Barbara, you can do Barbara and then you can do yourself. But anything you do, it doesn't matter. Because they're all leading you to wash out this idea of sin. That's its purpose. So let's start with Barbara. And we'll give um, three 
it's three to four minutes to each person. All right. So, Barbara, I'm going to focus on you now. I'm just going to do a quick blessing and then let everybody. So, Barbara, you have 42 minds joined with the power of God thinking about how beautiful and holy you are. So, Barbara, I love you and I bless you and I honour you as the holy self that we are. You are innocent, you are sinless, you are guiltless, you are perfect, you are the love of God, you are whole, you are complete. I see only your purity. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Now, Sue Gray. Focus on the purity of you. So everyone just focus on Sue. See her sinlessness, her beauty, her radiant self. I love you. I bless you and I honour you as a true self that is one, the holy self, the purity. I see your sinlessness. I see your guiltlessness. I see only the radiant Christ, beauty. Beautiful, lovely, whole, and complete. I bless you with my holiness. And I receive the blessing of your holiness. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you, Sue. I hope you enjoyed having all that blessing coming in. <laughs> Hazel. So everyone just have hold Hazel in your mind. She's just us, right? Any thoughts we have about her, the thoughts we have about ourselves. So let's make them holy. Let's do this blessing. Let's hold her in the light of the truth, the love of God. So Hazel, we'll do a blessing to start with. I love you and I bless you and I honour you as my holy brother, holy self, one with God. I see your innocence. I see your sinlessness. I see your purity. A beautiful, gorgeous Christ self that's shining brightly, is radiant. Is radiant like a star. That light has never stopped shining. Always shining. It's beautiful and it's lovely. It's gentle and tender. Amen. Okay, thank you, Hazel. Now, Alee. So if everyone can put their attention on Alee, but you may start to 
feel that it's starting to blend into this oneness. <laughs> there might be some experience happening for you. So because we're not looking at bodies, we're not interested in bodies, but we're doing this to help each other in terms of that the person getting the blessing can have a little shift of perception in their own mind. And it, that's all we're doing is, is they're receiving the blessing and they are opening up and healing in their own mind through the joining of this. So, Amelie, I love you. I bless you. And I honor you. And thank you. I see just the beautiful Holy Son of God, the beautiful Christ, the light of the world, the inner radiance, the holy love emanating from you. See your true self, sinless guiltless, innocent, lovely, beautiful and whole. I feel blessed by your holiness and I bless you with my holiness. I feel us joined in a warm, beautiful hug of love. Amen. So this, thank you, Annalie. 
we start to see that this is seeing the face of Christ, what we're doing now, we're not seeing a face, but we're coming to an inner, an inner experience of the Christ through how we see our brother, how we're looking, in other words, perceiving what we're experiencing in our brother, we're experiencing it. We're seeing it in our brother. We're blessing him. We're looking out. Not really looking with eyes, but with an inner vision. The spiritual eye is looking. So thank you, Anna Lee. Nancy. Thank you. Love you. I bless you. And I honour you. We're going to raise you up. The group is going to hold you as a beautiful holiness that you are. The radiant light, the love of God, the infinite self, the vast eternal love of God, the Holy Christ, blessed loved, divine, the beautiful sinless self, infinite, vast, holy, loved, blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Nikki.
Uh, do you feel like putting your picture on the key? Well, it doesn't matter if you don't. Okay, we'll just do the key. So continue, it doesn't matter what she really looks like. It, it's got no concern because we're holding exactly the same. Because this is not anything to do with the body. So let's just focus on Nikki. Nikki, just slide back and receive this blessing. <clears throat> Our whole group is holding you as your true self. We're raising you up, holding you, seeing your perfect holiness. I love you. Bless you. And I honor you. I see only your holy self, the beautiful love that you are, the infinite vast self, the underworld. This divine love created you as, a, as you are. Your sinlessness, your guiltlessness, just pure, just pure, just purity. It's white, beautiful light and love that you are. You are perfect, you are whole, and you are complete. No thought can ever damage your radiant self. They're just thoughts, and they come and go. How can just a little thought attack the Son of God? It's just pure holiness, infinite past and radiant shining. Amen.
Thank you, Nikki. Uh, so, the last one we're doing is Julie. And then we'll do the group as a whole. So, Julie, accept this blessing and this love from the minds joined in this group as we lift you up and your mind just gives a little opening to receive the idea that we're not sinful. We release these ideas. We don't even have to spend time releasing them. All we have to do is come to entertain and open up to the truth about ourselves. That we are this beautiful love. We were created by love. So Julie, kindness created you kind. Love created you loving. Perfection created you perfect. How beautiful is that? I love you, I bless you, and I honour you. I see only your holy self. The inner spiritual eye, the mind, sees the beauty, the Christ, the infinite love. Thank you are. I bless you with my holiness. I extend my holiness and my love. I receive the blessing and love of your holiness and join you in that. Amen.
Okay, thank you everyone who asked for the blessing today. Now we're going to do the group as a whole. So you're welcome to focus on one person or just feel joined in the group. You could see us all standing in a big circle, holding hands, eye gazing with each other. You could go, you could see yourself going up to everyone individually if you want to look around and just going up and giving each other a big hug walking up to each one and just hugging and just whispering something like, I see your holiness, I love you, bless you, I'm one with you. So let's do that, something along those lines, you choose which one you like. We could just see us all holding hands in silence, just eye gazing, feeling that love. You could have Jesus in the middle or holding hands with us something where you feel very joined and very full of love. So do that for a few minutes. And now, as we just before we come out of that, I want you to just extend that love to everyone. Feel everyone here, everyone that's been, everyone that's here now, and everyone to come. He says that in the course. Feel your love going out and embracing them. 
Feel that there's no one left out. Feel that it's touching everyone, embracing them, enveloping them. See everyone's faces raised with smiles. To feel this one love, this infinite, vast love, like this golden light, and merged in it. And if you'd even like to feel everyone singing to God, everyone joined in the song to God, just feel this gratitude, this really deep gratitude of everyone singing this one love song. Feel this love radiating into you. That is God. This infinite love. This love filling you up. As you sing. Love, love and gratitude. Joining everyone. All voices. Raised. And singing. So it's, it's a little bit hard to come back from that, isn't it? <laughs> so it people last. But I can. So, you know, this is a recording. So when it's put up onto the group, if you want to just listen to the end part of this, you can forward through the video and just find the meditation at the end, if you like, or if could listen to the whole thing again or you can just sit down and do it on your own you've got sort of many ideas now about coming to this clear and pure self so this this feeling of this peace is the capitalist self that's what it is it's that peace and love and gratitude that is present here and now without any thoughts so if you're feeling just resting in this inner peace and there's no thoughts, you're in the self. You're in it. There's nowhere to go because you're already there. You have the peace of God. It is the same as the capitalist self. So thank you everyone for joining in today. Thank you to Shannon for your help. And uh, try to spend the next few hours in quietness. Don't rush off to, if you can, don't look at your phone. Just let this marinate. There's more to come. There's a deeper experience always. There's this luscious love. So try to, if you can, Spend the next few hours in quietness. And even if you can, I know a lot of you are going to bed in a few hours. Try not to talk if you can. You might need to do some, say something practical, but try to keep this because it's like it will really 
um, like a little bud of a flower and open out. And there might be some more experiences, a more sort of a revelatory experience bubbling up. So try to do that if you can. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Love you. Bye-bye.